Anything difficult where you have to think is good for your brain. If you ask Usain Bolt, how do I get stronger legs? Run. It, it's intuitive. But the flesh in our skulls, it's meant to think and feel. And that is the power of self-growth. And it's a thinking machine. It's a thinking flesh that you actually have to use or to protect itself because it's an energy hog, right? It's three pounds, but uses 20%. If you're not using parts of it, it'll program itself to let those parts of the garden wither. So the diversity of thinking and the depth of thinking just one level past what you're used to is the way to keep the whole garden flourishing. And it is a garden in there. There's chemicals, there are things moving, there are different types of brain cells. It's not just neurons. So I would try to give that metaphor analogy, if you will, that it's a garden and you have to irrigate it and stimulate and tend to all the corners, particularly the ones you're starting to neglect. Maybe it's your left hand. Getting out of the box and engaging the recesses of your mind is the most important thing. And then the creative things happen. You don't just sit down and have them happen. You got to work and dream and go hard. And on top of that, something creative can happen. So is there a specific protocol? Like I know people have said, brush your teeth with your left hand or one of the coolest things I've ever heard about staving off dementia mm -hmm. is to take dance class because mm -hmm. having to um, do bodily movements mm -hmm. but in a particular rhythm and learning new steps is like sort of the ultimate trifecta for keeping the brain young. Are there things like that? Because people listening right now, yep. they want to write something down. Step one, okay. do this. Step two, do this. So now we have the understanding that the brain is meant to think. The brain is also meant to command your body to move. And absolutely, the minute you don't use your left hand, the right parietal lobe with the motor strip says, I'm not gonna use much. I'll shave down that, I'll shave down that density of those brain cells a little bit. So that's where movement's important. So simple things like getting the mouse, you know, using the mouse with your left hand and using your phone with your left hand. It's a powerful technique. And then the other thing is navigation. When you see old people and they lose their way home, well, that has a particular address also. Many things are global in the brain, but navigation is in the temporal lobe and they have dementia in that area. Navigation also is uh, spatial awareness is a function of the brain. And sometimes when we're on our phones too much, we don't have that. So my kids, I tell them, don't look down, not religiously or adamantly, but try to just remember our route and just look up and see how, see how far you can get. Uh, I think those habits will help us as we get less young. And those are practical things we can do during the day. The other element is brain training. It, it doesn't have to be some weird game that's not intuitive. I think brain training just means learning as a habit, mm -hmm. one step past where you're comfortable. If you're reading it, you know it, your brain's an, it's an idol. If it's too hard, it's not even engaged. It's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna win this race. I'm not gonna kick it in second gear. So just, just like video games, just good enough to get to the next level, right? They don't hit you with the fifth level, the tilt level up front. It's level one to level two, level two to level three. And that's what learning is. So despite your knowledge and intellect, it's just that level right beyond you that is brain training. So you don't have to buy an app. You just have to challenge yourself and think.